Hello my sock universe. Well, this will be one of those opinion pieces that I don't know where to put in. But I thought since we just had the Ballon d'Or and I mentioned a teeny bit in my league uh, review for the midweek, I thought I need to do something on that topic and then leave it for the entirety of this channel's lives because, uh, spoiler alert, I don't really care much about the Ballon d'Or. Uh, in the sense that uh, it's a collective sport and this Ballon d'Or, especially lately, is always geared towards the flashy players. Now, the Ballon d'Or has been in many ways actually a better measure of who is the best player, I would say, up until like the mid-2000s, because there was a little bit more variety in there. It was always better than the FIFA player, who is devoted by national team captains and national team coaches, where... Uh, to be honest, you get um, coaches from teams that have, as, you know, uh, let's say Bhutan, nothing against Bhutan, but just Bhutan that uh, do not follow uh, the leagues so closely, but they get uh, the same vote as does England or France. And you get then crazy votes where certain players that had a really bad season suddenly end up with uh, the award. At least the Ballon d'Or has for most of the time be journalists and got some good results. But it's still not perfect to me because, as I said, it's a collective sport. And instead of a Ballon d'Or, I think it would be better to have an Ons d'Or. So, I mean, get the best 11 of the year. And yes, we can argue what would the system of the best 11 be. It definitely cannot be a best 11 where we have, um, you know, four strikers, then two offensive midfield players, uh, one defensive uh, midfield player and three um, defenders. That will not work. It needs to be a usable system. So kind of how would you pick your best team of that type? So, you know, uh, sometimes I could mention a 4-4-2, four, four, a 3-4-3. Three, Maybe a system that can be determined uh, ahead of time. You know, there's a committee that says, okay, this year we're going to make this system. I'll make a 3-4-3. Three, three. I think that I could probably live with that. So that's my general thought on the Ballon d'Or. Now, uh, I have to say, I mean, I went in preparation for this video. I want to talk about 10 players that have not won the Ballon d'Or, but that I think really should have won the Ballon d'Or. And I want to go through the list and, you know, it goes more or less from the, I don't want to say the least deserving, but the least likely because of the time period they were playing in uh, and trying to nail down where they could have won it and instead of home a little bit. So I want to go through that. But I do want to mention um, the Ballon d'Or, when I went through the winners, there were uh, two in there that actually retroactively really surprised me. That's Pavel Nedved in 2003, which was 100% deserved. And Fabio Cannavaro in 2006 was the last defender. A defender could win that award. So, I mean, that is something pretty big. But then uh, I don't want to deny Michael Owen his uh, Ballon d'Or, but to be honest, when I see other players in there, I thought there were other players that probably were a little bit more deserving now retroactively nothing against England nothing against Michael Owen he was a brilliant player but I think there were others that were in there uh, and also before we go into the list I also realized I mean basically if you want to win the Ballon d'Or you either apply your trade in Italy this was for the early years and I went from 93 on so that time where I really was following it I mean I was aware that from Boston 92 won it in 91 I think it was Lothar Mateos I was aware of that but where it really clicked for me is 93 budget so this is the list where I went through so uh early on it was more or less you had to play in Italy or later years Spain and there was an in-between period there were only a couple of players that won it uh while playing in England I think it was Michael Owen I and this was Cristiano and in Germany it was Matthias Sommer in 96 and that was that so I mean there's also a clear tendency and yes at the time those were the best leagues uh, but you know Italy pulled out winners even in the mid 2000s when the Serie A was already on the decline but they still had a star power uh, and I'm looking I mean the last one uh, playing in Italy that won it uh, is of course Kaká in 07 okay Loads of talking, 
already very contentious and you know the nice thing is i really would love for you to uh drop your line now i put here 10 players actually 11 uh, 10 players that are retired and that's why uh, i had the 11th one on there and i realized now yeah, that guy's still playing <laughs> uh but he's also the one that clearly is for me bottom of the list and i want to have him as an honorable mention and that is slatan ibrahimovic of course um the main reason is that slatan has been and this is uh one a mark of this list a very consistent performer that didn't have one outstanding season and I would not know where I would slot, where I said Slatan was the best player in the world. He had the bad, bad luck in a way that he was uh, born in the era of uh, Cristiano and Messi. And as great as Slatan is, and I love his professionalism, and, um, so, and I love him as a person in many ways, he never was ahead of those two. Never. Maybe now in age, maybe, but I think the other two, they still have to go up to 40. So we have to see that, uh, which I think both of them will probably, probably still play at 40. But if I'm honest, I would not see where he could have broken that mold. Um, it's also the biggest problem, and this is my biggest knock on him. Uh, he wins you league titles because he scores a lot of goals against smaller teams. He never shone on the biggest stage like a Champions League. Uh, or when he is this, I mean, I remember once when Inter had to play Manchester United, make up a two-goal deficit. I watched that game and he was anonymous. So this is why I think Slatan never really would have deserved it. The other, the next few, I think we can make an argument. Number 10, I have Andrea Pirlo, more or less because he was always one of my favorite players. Again, I do have... Overall, a slight problem. Where do I fit Pirlo? But I can find a window. And that window is roughly 06, 07, maybe 06, 07, probably. He was the metronome of the Italy team that made it to the World Cup. And he was the metronome behind Milan uh, winning the Champions League in, in 07. And that Milan team ran on Pirlo and Gattuso. With Gattuso doing the hard work, Pirlo being the uh, mastermind behind it. Um, I gotta say, it is hard to put Pirlo ahead of some of the players that were placed in these years. But I think his overall work, especially in that period with that Italy team, with that Milan team, and also then in his later period at Juventus, we're still in an old age, he was he, he became like an icon. Maybe he could have deserved a Ballon d'Or. But I think Pirlo is more of a cult hero, so maybe not quite there. Number nine, I have... Gabi Gol, Gabriel Batti, or Batti Gol, Gabriel Battistuta. And again, really hard to find a slot because the biggest problem with Battistuta is, I mean, he is one of my favorite strikers of all time. However, like Ibrahimovic, he tended to score against smaller teams. He never, re I mean, I don't want to say he didn't score the big goals because he led Argentina to two uh, Copa Americas in um 91 and 93, 93 especially. He scored at the World Cup, but most of the goals he scored at the World Cup were kind of first round goals, never in the big stage. So uh, never really decisive goals. So that's a knock on Batistuta. Uh, what also undoes Batistuta in many ways is his uh, love for Fiorentina. If he would have played for another team where he wins trophies, he could have lifted him up. So I really have a hard time placing Batistuta anywhere very well on this list. I think prime Batistuta is 97, 98, 99. However, when I look at the winners, Ronaldo 97, 90, Zidane 9, 98, that sounds about all right. Maybe 99. Maybe. But also not quite, because Rivaldo was amazing in that season. So, you see. Number 8. Another one that I have a hard time slotting it, but I think that should deserve it. If if uh, we wouldn't put a weight on, uh, how to say, it? we wouldn't put, put, put a weight on the front positions, I think goalkeepers should win that award way more often. Gigi Buffon is a player. He has been consistently great. The one where I really have to say he probably could, could have won it, but you know, Cannavaro also deserves it, as, as McGrain was in 06. That's the one where Buffon was at the height of his powers. 
Uh, but he was a consistently great goal goalkeeper. He's not the last goalkeeper on this list, but I think Gigi Buffon would have deserved it. So this is number eight. Now, uh, number seven, and let me write it actually down. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Number seven and number six are very close to each other. And if I mention the one, you will know the other. I choose number seven because uh, to be Iniesta because I think that the player at number six is slightly more dominant than a slightly better player. However, Iniesta is one of those amazing players that he scored a World Cup winning goal in 2010. He was, as Pirlo, the metro, one of the metronomes behind this great Barcelona team, an absolute brilliant player, and he scored the, and he very often scored super important goals. Where would I slot him? I think Iniesta definitely somewhere on 9, 10, 11. I think this was the height of Iniesta, uh, where he was at his most powerful. I actually would say in 10, he probably would have deserved it over Messi. I think Iniesta was better there. Having said Iniesta, at number 6, I have to say Xavi. And for Xavi, same thing as I can say for Iniesta. For me, those two are almost inseparable. I just think that Xavi is the more, um, how to how, how say, the more gifted passer, the, uh, the, the one that uh, was a little bit more metronome than, um, Sh uh, than Iniesta. Um, but yeah, Xavi, I think in 08, where he dominated Euro 2008, he was the best player of Euro 2008. That was the first time that I would think Xavi should, should, should deserve it. But that was the height of the power. And I, th um, I think anywhere from 08 to 12, Xavi very well should have, could have won the award. And I would say uh, we have here four times Messi in a row. And I would say that in 09 and 010, yes, Messi scored a crazy lots of goals. But I think this was more Xavi's and Iniesta's team. 11, 12, this is where Messi really came into his prime. Where I would say, yeah. That's where he, 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 he deserved it. So that's why I think those are two players that 100% should have won the Ballon d'Or. Absolutely. Number five, the last goalkeeper, Oliver Kahn. I don't know what you remember from him. Yes, he was crazy. However, in 01 and in 02, Oliver Kahn single-handedly won Bayern a Champions League and got Germany to a World Cup final. That should be it. I will choose Kahn over Owen and Kahn even over Ronaldo in that year because Ronaldo only performed at the World Cup. Kahn overall the better overall player in these two years. I think he definitely would have... I, I did not like him. I hated that guy at the time. But I honestly have to say, when he won the Champions League, I honestly, I stood up and applauded because of the greatness of this goalkeeper. So he definitely would have deserved it. Number four, Thierry Henry. That this, to me, is at the time Henry came up, he made the Premier League into the global powers. He and Manchester, and this great Manchester United team. But it was at a time when Serie A was just about waning and the Premier League was on the rise. The Premier League was still a little bit looked, at least from in my perspective, a little bit looked down upon. I could see there might be something growing. They have, have a lot of money, but they didn't have one of those teams that really kind of inspired me. They had flair. Except for Thierry Henry. And I think 04, I think Thierry Henry, 03, 02. Where he, I mean, he was amazing in these years. Definitely should have won it in his Ars Ar Arsenal years. He's one of those, those, those players. Um, as I said, 02, we have Ronaldo. I think this is one of those he really only based on the World Cup won that one. Pavel Nedved was ahead of Henri. Uh, that's for me a toss up because Nedved was absolutely amazing. And then there was Shevchenko in 04, which, yeah, hmm. The 04 award is one of those weird ones where, yeah, I think Shevchenko just slotted right in on a great season for Milan. Uh, and thankfully that Greece did great at the world, at, at, at the Euros and none of the other stars did great there. So 
That's why I think he could have slotted in there quite nicely. Number three, probably one of my, one of my if not the favorite player of all times, Paolo Maldini. Maldini, if you go through the listing, I mean, as early as I think 90, 93 already, but probably even 92, he's, he was in there and he was there consistently. The big problem for Maldini was that he was so consistent, he never had one outstanding season. It was all consistency and he always played on these teams. He was the captain, he was the leader, but he was never the, the outstanding player, which is if you've seen Maldini play, uh, he was a much more elegant player than, uh, for instance, a, Ca a Carnavaro, who had one amazing World Cup. Maldini made an entire career out of that. And it's down to this consistency, but never being outstanding, that he never got the votes. And I would say where he was in his pomp was also where he probably had his weakest season. That was 96, 97, 97, 98. Where if he would have, and uh, it is well documented that he, these were the wild years where actually he was a little bit, uh, he, he got famous in 94 at the World Cup where he was voted the sexiest uh, player of the tournament, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and then he lost his ways a little bit. If he would have been on in his prime in these years, Yes, there was a Ronaldo who was growing crazy. There was a Zidane who won a World Cup. But I think, except especially in 996 with Matthias Sommer, if Maldini is on his top, that would be his award, I think. But Milan did not do all that great these years. So, yeah, uh, that's where I could slot him. This is where Maldini was, uh, but I, I guess, a lifetime achievement. And the other two, I can say the very same are argument. I have a number two, Del Piero. And I would slot Del Piero also, 95, 96, 97. He never made it into the top three. To me, Del Piero was an amazing player. Amazing. Especially these Juve sides that he all three years in a row got to the Champions League final where Juve should have won more than the just one title. They were favored in every single one of those. They were absolutely the best team. To be honest, Juve should have had a hat trick there. And yes, Zidane was maybe the star player that they got. But the star player of that team was Del Piero. Del Piero was the iconic player on the best team in the world. And he didn't even get enough votes. I do not understand this. And at number one, I have a player that I would argue is even more talented than Del Piero. And that's Raul I remember when Raul came out, I think it was in 97, 98. And I remember because he's just a few months older than I am. And I was thinking, and everyone was saying, wow, this is a talented kid. This guy is for sure a Ballon d'Or winner soon, 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 soon or later. Raul carried Real Madrid. Carried them to three Champions League trophies in five years. Yes, the first one and the second one were rather lucky. I give them that. But in 2002, would be better. His case would be much stronger if he would have played in a period where the Spanish national team was better. He carried that freaking team. But he also was his downfall. In 2000, he missed a penalty. In 2002, they got uh, done by, <laughs> by uh, the referee in uh, that World Cup. Uh, I still may maintain that if uh, Spain go through there, they might as well have won it. I, th I really think so. They had the talent there. Raul, for me, Champions League top scorer up, up until Messi and Ronaldo came. He was the Champions League top scorer. He was the idol. He was the icon. He carried Madrid for an entire decade at least. He should have won the Ballon d'Or at one time. For me, he is the biggest player. And you might argue with me. But for me, Raul is the one that come, comes to mind. This guy should have won it. And if I look at my list here, I think in 01 he made, yeah, 01 he made it second behind uh, Michael Owen. This is the time when Raul should have won. He was the best player back then. So these are my 10 players that did not win it. They show the weaknesses of the Ballon d'Or and why I don't really like it. I rather would have it like the Oscars to have a lifetime award as such. Or as I said, make a best 11, 3 for 3 every year. I think that will work. What's your thought on this 
uh, would you rank them any differently? As I said, I made this now quickly. There might be, a, I could have, I have a feeling that I have Xavi in, in, in NES a little bit too low, uh, but you know, um, I also could not really move them around too much. So that's just a thing. So I really want to know what you think about this list and who would be your at least top three players who should have won the Ballon d'Or. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. Drop a line below, I want to hear, let the discussion begin. Talk to you soon. Bye. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated on all the things that are rotating in my soccer universe. And with that, I'm going to wish you a wonderful day. Bye.